I'd like to do talk to you about some of the benefits of hypnosis and different kinds of hypnosis, kind of an overview. And then at the end, we're going to do a group regression. So it's called Hypno Healing, Transform Your Life Through Regression Hypnosis. And like John said, that is how I got interested in hypnosis. I took life coaching. I was wondering what to do in my retirement. And I've always wanted to be a counselor, be of service to help and heal people. So I did Reiki, got my master Reiki certificate and the life coaching. And then I was at life coaching and we did a group regression similar to the one we'll do this evening. And I was just fascinated. It just hooked me. And then I'm getting chills right now. And I, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted to do to help people because I had such an amazing awakening and it lifted my vibration. It cleared my allergies, believe that or not. I mean, I haven't had allergies in years. So, and I don't know what happened with that. I think it was this work. Um, it had to have been because what I have found is that through this mind, body, and spirit connection, you can heal your life, just like what Louise Hay said. So this is how I found it to be true. And I'm going to share a little bit with you today. And I know you guys are Casey fans. Edgar Casey himself recommended hypnosis as a tool for healing and transformation. He advised that the study of self may be done by suggestive forces to the body through hypnosis. And we can't use those suggestive forces in, until you get to some form of altered state, whether that be meditation or hypnosis. And then that can help you out a little bit. And Casey said that hypnosis can cure anything that is not karmic. So we've all heard of karma, you know, balancing issues from even earlier in your life or past lives. They come to fruition in this life. Um, but it doesn't mean you can't help the situation. Once you're aware of it, you can get past the karma and you can heal yourself from that. And Edgar Casey in hypnosis, a lot of you know how he put himself into hypnosis, but if you've not heard the entire story, he learned to put himself into hypnosis from a traveling hypnotist and he cured himself from laryngitis doing so. He learned that he could talk during hypnosis and he actually healed his wife, Gertrude, from tuberculosis and his son, Hugh Lynn, when he had the photography accident when he was living in Bowling Green. So it's just amazing things happen when he came out with all this information in hypnosis. And Edgar knew how to put himself into hypnosis, right? He would start with his chakras and he relaxed himself. And when he got to his solar plexus, Gertrude knew that he would be in just the right place or he would fall asleep, but I, his eyes would flutter. And then she would be the one to provide the suggestion. So she would kind of be like the hypnosis, but he could put himself in that way. And Edgar Casey readings seem to agree that hypnosis involves a distinct state, altered state of consciousness, which can be induced in an interpersonal relationship by a trained hypnotist, or it can be self-awakened. So after tonight, you'll be able to put yourself there if you haven't done so before. A lot of you have experienced this. So that's just what he did. He would put himself there. Research psychology tells us that the induction of the hypnotic state requires a belief or acceptance on the part of the participant. So you kind of have to believe it's going to happen. If you say, no one can put me into hypnosis, well, they probably can't then. <laughs> so you have to be open-minded and you have to be aware that this can, this can help your life and it's going to make you feel better. And if anything else, it may put you to sleep or you may have the best sleep tonight you've ever had. I hope. So why age or past life regression? And this is a quote from Gabor Mate. When you shut down in motion, you're also affecting your immune system, your nervous system. So the repression of an emotion, it's a survival strategy, it then becomes a source of physiological illness later on. So if you don't release this emotion, it just becomes trapped in your body and it becomes disease or like Edgar Casey says, dis-ease and it'll cause you pain. Therefore, when this emotion is felt, this trauma can be released from the body. 
And hopefully, you know, if you have some pain in your body and you want to set that intention to get rid of that pain, that may help you tonight. And so there's different kinds of hypnosis, clinical and regression. Clinical I do, I was just trained in a couple of years ago, actually is another tool to add to help my clients. It's more of getting rid of bad habits like uh, weight loss, smoking cessation, getting rid of fears, um, and anxiety is a big one. I help a lot of clients with that. So usually if they come to me for anxiety, I might use a clinical with them. They listen to a recording for 30 days and then they get curious and they're like, I want to try a past life regression now. And then they do a past life regression. So that's always fun. Um, clinical is usually a script that I use with the client and personally use whatever they tell me to put in their script. Um, and then in inner regression, the person would share their experiences and their journey. Okay. So we can't all share out loud tonight until the end, but you can be thinking about it and internalizing it. Okay. So past life regression can help you gain insight. So this soul can plans this incarnation to grow, to learn and to release the karma. You planned it before you came here. And so when you understand your life purpose and you gain insight into a past life, it makes you grow spiritually. And that's really what happened to me as I spiritually awakened. It helps you understand more profoundly the mind, body, and spirit connection and how we're all responsible for our, our patterns and our spiritual growth. Regression can, hypnosis can also help you relieve anxiety. It can heal pain and it can heal relationships. I've had some clients that I've worked with that one, one lady came to me and she was wondering why she's been single for so many years. And she was actually blocking that spirit mate from coming in. And it was a past life that was doing that. She tried to figure out everything in her life and went to other psychologists, psychiatrists, Finally, we went in to one of her past lives. And then after that, she was able to call in the right relationship for her. She was able to get better insight into why she was blocking it. So get comfortable with emotion. I always say when you feel, you heal. So it's okay. We've all, all been told in our childhood, don't cry. But actually, it's a good thing to cry. It releases emotion. And after this group regression, you might find yourself yawning sometimes. I'm going to say the word yawn and I'm going to yawn, but it happens. So that's just another way of releasing emotion. So these past life experiences and present life experiences, they're stored emotionally. And when emotion gets stuck again, then this disease enters. And karma is actually stored in the endocrine system in the chakras. So all that's related. And if you release it, you know, then you can start to heal from these things. So here's the big idea. So we're going to use hypnosis to move from the ego consciousness, which is what we live in in our everyday world, and go into the soul consciousness. So these experiences from the previous lives, they do have impact on your personal life. For instance, um, my daughter-in-law, she is so afraid of the water. Well, this happened maybe four years ago. And she's like, I don't know why this happens. I can be by the water, but I can't get in a boat and go on the water. It's really scary. Well, come to find out, we went into a past life and she had drowned at the very same age she was. And her anxiety was just getting more and more. And after she was able to release that anxiety about water and you know, she's a lot, she's, she's a lot better around it now. So these memories, even from your current life can also have an effect. So your past life and your current life kind of mesh together and your soul memory is recorded in the Akashic records. So we can retrieve that during a past life regression. And like I said, anything not karmic can be worked on through hypnosis, but you can, you can learn from it. You can reframe it. You can observe it in a different manner and lessen it. So this is why, like what we're trying to do. So you can figure like our ego is the tip of the iceberg, right? And then the veil 
kind of when we go into a different altered state of consciousness is like the surface. And then the soul would be everything underneath. And look at how vast that is. That's how much is really untapped. And so that's what we're trying to do, trying to get to that place where we can remember things and observe them in a different way and get get information. So what is hypnosis? It's the finding of the suggestibility of the mind that's achieved between wakefulness and sleep. It's kind of like, you know, when you're getting up in the morning and you just had a had a dream, you're kind of that in between. Trans states are normal. They happen every night and they're familiar. Every one of us is daydreamed, right? In class, my students used to do this and I'd be like, where are you? <laughs> and they were in some sort of little trance. You may feel time distortion, not hear outside noises, okay? So that those are common things that happen. Uh, other common things that happen are people think, did that really happen? Was I really in a trance? You know, yes, you, prob you probably were just if you went somewhere else for a little while. And that's what actually makes us feel better and less stressed. And there's another example of when you might be in a trance. Have you ever uh, driven to a common place you always drive and then you get there and you're like, I don't even know how I got here. Well, then you get there and you had the best idea of your life. So what was happening is you were getting rid of your ego for a little while. You're letting your other part of your brain reenact. And then you were meshing the two together. So actually, it does help us to go into that other state a little while, as long as you get to the place where you're going. And here are some more benefits. So regressions are emotional, they're experiential, and they're spiritual. It addresses the deeper core of ourselves and our issues. Like traditional therapy is largely cognitive, but I believe the two can be meshed together. And it releases trauma and stress. I know that's what it's really done for me. You can achieve a higher vibration. You now, a lot of you, if you do meditation on a regular basis, you feel really good after. And it helps you clear blocks. I help people do this when they... They, they feel a block about wanting to start a new job or a different career. And that's what I help them do to kind of get back on track. And you can bring gifts into the present life. Let's say that in a past life, you were an artist and you want to do that in this life, but you really haven't gotten into it yet. Well, this is, this is the way to do it. Remember what happened in the past. And this says the past is your lesson. The present is your gift. The future is your motivation. Love that quote. And here are some different types of regressions. So there's an age regression. You can go back to an age where you first noticed an issue. Um, or you can find a happy childhood memory when you felt safe and loved. Sometimes people don't remember everything from their childhood. And they want to, if they've had trauma, they don't want to remember it. But even if you had a good childhood, sometimes you want to retrieve that memory because it makes you happy and joyful. And a past life memory, it's an exploration of the past life and it may have um, be active in your current life. It may be relevant in your current life. Or you can do a future life memory. It's called a progression. It will show you potentials and probabilities. And then there's in between lives. And contact your angels and your guides. It's kind of more direct communication about soul purpose and pre-life choices. So a lot of people come to me for that too. And, you know, angels and guides have so much advice. And if we don't ask, they're really not going to answer. So that's always fun to do. So an age regression. Like I said, you can go back when you first noticed an issue, a time where you felt safe or loved. So I recommend starting with the second, if you've had severe trauma or go to someone that is trained in releasing trauma. So mild trauma can be clear. It's, there's healing models and emotional models that you can do to get rid of some of the trauma. And I was reading 
rereading a book earlier today, and I remembered that you can also do, um, you can go to a time where you in, you were in utero, you know, I've read some books like that, and you can do that because some, when you were in your mother's tummy, there was a lot of emotion going on, you know, I mean, it's very an emotional time, and sometimes people keep that inside, not even knowing it. And after they go back to that time, they're able to understand how their mother was feeling and kind of reframe their thinking. And you can experience a past life. So have you ever visited a place you felt like you had been before? I heard some of you say you're going to go to Cuba. Maybe you felt like you were there in a past life. Do you decorate your house in a certain way, like with some... Egyptian things or, you know, things from another culture? Do you dress in a certain way, like in a certain culture? Does it just make you feel comfortable? And this is, everybody's probably had this experience. Have you met a person that you already know? Yeah, and we travel in these soul groups. So it's very, very common. And future life. Now this one is always fun. You can be your own psychic. <laughs> so you can set an intention about finding about the probabilities of what your life might look like. I'm still waiting for these flying cars, really waiting for that to happen. But I did one with a, a teacher friend of mine and she didn't know what to do in retirement either. I was already figuring it out. She's like, I want to know what I want. I want to do. So she went into this um, progression and she saw herself in a cabin doing her artwork, but more doing art therapy with, with students so that she could combine the way she was doing her work and still help heal people. And here are the in-between lives. So you can go to a place after a life and you can talk to your angels and your guides. You can ask what your life lesson was, what you need to work on in the current life. Am I on the right path? What do I need to do? And that just always gives someone reassurance that they're doing okay. And sometimes that's all we need to feel better. And here's the sequence of hypnosis. So we have prayer. And just for a group, I do um, a a white light of illumination and protection. But if I were with a single client, I would ask them what their spiritual affiliation is. Who do they pray to? Who do they like to meditate with? And then I would personalize it. And then we would work on breathing because a lot of people hold their breath and that causes anxiety in itself. So we do some breathing. We do some voice entrainment. So you just get used to someone listening to someone's voice and it's kind of repetitive but it, it works to follow the voice and um, try to forget about the things that are going on in your inner world. And then we do some progressive relaxation. So that's something that if you have trouble doing that you can, you can do yourself and to relax your body. Some guided imagery. So we just do some suggestions that, you know, you might follow a path and then you might find something type of thing. And if I were with a single client, I would do a depth check. I would say on a scale of one to 10, one being not very deep and 10 being very deep, I'd say, what number are you? So you can kind of say to yourself what, what you are in the scale later, maybe how deep you were. And then I do some more deepening if they weren't very deep. And then provide some suggestions and you know ask some questions that you want to ask. And then we talk about the experience. And for you all, you can write down later your experiences in a journal, or you can, you know, ask some questions after we're done. Okay. So now we're just going to do this little lemon test. It's a test to see that we use all of our senses and it helps us prepare for what we're going to do. Okay. So we're not going to do hypnosis yet. We're just going to close our eyes for a, a minute. and. We're going to think of taking out of our refrigerator a nice, juicy, fat lemon. And I want you to hold it in your hand. Pretend like you're holding it in your hand. You're feeling it. 
and you're going to get out a, a knife and you're going to put the lemon on a cutting board and you're going to make that slice in the cut in the lemon and slice it until you get a bunch of wedges. So you might be able to hear that knife slicing. And then you're gonna take one of the lemon wedges up to your nose and smell it. And then you're gonna put it to your mouth and you're gonna taste it and open your eyes. Nod your head if you could taste the lemon. <laughs> I could use all of them, but I think, you know, my images and tastes were really strong. Some of you might have all of them too, or one is stronger than the other. That's just a little test to get you ready to open up your senses to whatever you're feeling. Some people that can't see images in their mind's eye, it's okay. Don't be hard on yourself because you can feel, you can hear some things. You might even be able to smell or taste. You know, if you're in a certain culture, you might be able to smell the food that's cooking. Some people are really, really good at that. So just open your, open your senses, okay? All right, so we're going to get ready, but I'm going to do questions in a second. So just while I'm doing questions, we're going to set the intention to learn about a past life that has bearing on your present life. Heal something in your life or bring back a gift from the previous life that you can use to your fullest in this lifetime, okay? So before I start, you know, if anyone needs to use the restroom real quick, or if you have a question about the process or anything, we can answer that before we get started, okay? Rebecca has a question. Um, should this be done in darkness? Should we turn off the lights in our room? That Thank is, you. that is totally up to you. You're going to be closing your eyes. So, you know, unless it's really bright light, you know, it shouldn't bother you, but that's totally up to you. Totally up to you. Are there other questions? I can't see the whole screen. Let's see. Can you see Donna? If anyone else has a question? Um, not at the moment, no. Okay. Okay. We might come up with more questions after. We might want to share what happens. This is, this is really fun and it's all for your experience. And then since it's recorded, I guess John sends out the recording and you can replay it if you want to have a different experience. That's the, the beauty of it. Okay. So if you're ready, just kind of get into a, a nice, comfortable position, okay? And I want you to uncross your legs and uncross your hands because if you put your hands together, then they might fall asleep and then you'll come out of it a little bit, okay? So just get into a comfortable position. And close, you can go ahead and close your eyes. And just know that all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. And I'll be making some suggestions. And the suggestions that resonate with you, you can go ahead and accept. And if I ever make a suggestion that doesn't resonate with you, you can go ahead and leave that behind. And the same goes with the first suggestion of closing your eyes. If at any time you'd like to open your eyes, then go ahead and open your eyes. The only purpose for closing the eyes is to begin to turn inward. The eyes give us so much information about the everyday world. And today we're seeking to go deep within so that's the only purpose for closing the eyes. So our intention today is to find a past life that has relevance on your current life and to bring back a positive trait from the past life to heal your life. So let's imagine right now 
that we are surrounded by a golden light, a beautiful golden light of protection, healing, and illumination. We are surrounded by this golden light and we invite with us today the energies that are of the highest vibration and purest intention, be they guides, masters, or angels. And the work we'll be doing today is to make a transition into consciousness. We are seeking to move from the everyday waking world and cross the veil, so to speak, to the deeper soul mind. And there we are seeking to awaken what might be most helpful to you with a particular interest of learning about a past life that has relevance on your current life. And what you will need to move forward in this life and how to heal yourself and possibly bring back a positive trait that can help you. So with this protection in place, let's begin to open ourselves in heart and mind to the unseen forces that surround the doors of places of grace, healing, and soul memory. Now with this umbrella of protection in place, let's begin to work with our breathing. So go ahead and take a nice deep breath in through your nose and a slow, gentle breath out through your mouth, almost like you're blowing out a candle. Take another nice deep breath in and a slow, gentle breath out. One last nice deep breath in and a slow, gentle breath out. Now let's begin to use the imagination. Imagine with each breath in that feeling of peace coming into every part of your mind. And with each breath out, feel yourself letting go, letting go of any and all tension. Feel yourself sinking into the chair, just releasing and relaxing. Now re imagine yourself in a relaxing, safe place. It could be a beach, near the mountains, a forest, or just a place where you feel safe. Let your mind open up with the sensations you feel there. Notice what you feel, what you sense, see, hear, or smell. And with the next breath in, feel yourself letting go, letting go of what you no longer need, just peaceful and relaxed. Imagine that feeling of peace coming down through your crown chakra. Now feel your feet inside your shoes, just relaxing on the floor. Feel your legs relax as you move up your body. Feel your knees and upper legs sink into the chair. Your lower back is relaxing and your upper back relaxing against the chair a little bit more. Move up to your shoulders, sinking and settling. Your arms and hands are feeling a little bit heavier now. Your facial muscles loosen and relax and your eyes feel heavy 
And just notice all the sensations in the body and what you are experiencing. And realize how these sensations may change from second to second, minute to minute, hour to hour, and yet you remain. Now contemplate your emotions, if any, which you are experiencing right now, and notice their quality, and realize how these emotions may alter from second to second, minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day, and yet you remain. Now contemplate on any thoughts and ideas that are coming in and out. Any random thoughts as they ebb and flow. Just being aware. And realize how these continuous flow of thoughts may alter from hour to hour, day to day, month to month. And yet you remain. Your feelings, sensations, emotions, and thoughts are only part of you. Your core is distinct from all these, separate, and yet still a part of you. Your emotions and thoughts are like the swift fish who swim through the sea. The sea includes them. They are a part of the sea, and yet the sea is distinct from them. The sea itself remains. Today, we are going to go on a journey inside your own imagination, where you can find sanctuary, a place of healing and self-discovery. It already exists deep within your unconscious mind. But let's see if we can make it easier for you to access this sacred place whenever you need it. Now, when I count from one to 10, you will go 1,000 times deeper, 100 times deeper with every number you hear without even trying. One and 100 times deeper. Two, 200. Three, farther. Four and four hundred. Five deeper. Six. Seven and seven hundred. Eight deeper. Nine. And 10, 1,000 times more deeply relaxed. I invite you to step back into the place you felt peace at the beach or the forest or another safe place. Experience all those sensations and make the picture clearer. Make this scene brighter and brighter until it seems real to you. You will come upon a path meandering through the scene. And if you like, you can follow the path. It takes you deeper and deeper with every step you take. The sights and sounds are more vivid. The smells more pleasant. The feeling more comfortable. This is your dreamscape. You may now step into your dreamscape in this sacred area. There is some structure, perhaps a temple in the center. It feels both safe and sacred to you. It is your own inner resource, recording all that your soul experiences throughout eternity. 
explore the environment around the structure, but do not go inside just yet. Enjoy using your senses and note what you hear, smell, feel, and even taste. I invite you to notice a figure in your sacred place. It can take any form you like. It is your own higher self, a guardian angel or a guide. It may feel familiar or new, but it feels safe and loving. Spend some time with this being and pay attention to how you feel, what is said and what is exchanged between you two. You have come here for a special purpose, to discover a part of your soul's self, perhaps a life lived before this present life. This knowledge exists deep within your soul, and you can retrieve whatever you need to know. Learn what a relevance a past life has on your present life, and what connections you have with the people in this life from another life or even what karma is being balanced in this lifetime. Your higher self is within you, making this a safe experience no matter what has happened before. When you are ready, you may wish to visit inside this temple where you can discover past lives. On entering it, you may discover a long curving hall of mirrors. Even if the structure appeared small on the outside, you find it is vast on the inside. The mirrors might be ornate, plain, framed, some in dark wood or made of other materials. Each one is different than the next as you notice the mirrored hall seems to curve on endlessly. As you look into these mirrors, you might see versions of yourself at different ages in your life. You might even see yourself as you appeared in other lifetimes. You find yourself drawn to a particular mirror. When you are ready, you may approach it. The mirror may show you a clear version of yourself in another lifetime. When you are ready, you can approach it. The mirror may turn to a soft mist, and like Allison through the looking glass, you may wish to walk through this shimmering surface. On the other side of the mirror, you may experience yourself as you once were. Knowing your higher self is acting as a guide in making this visit safe. Know you will be guided back when you are ready. Know that the mirror portal will remain where it is, like the lamppost in Narnia, and be easy to find when you leave. You may now wish to move into this environment and explore. I invite you to turn around and observe yourself in the mirror from this side. Notice what you look like. What gender are you? Age. Notice what you are wearing.
What do you call yourself in this lifetime? Notice your feet. Are you barefoot or wearing shoes? Notice what is around you. Do you know what time period in history or what culture? Perhaps notice the terrain or if there are any structures or modes of transportation and other people. Can you hear voices? And if so, what are they saying? Notice what you smell or taste in your mouth. What does the weather feel like where you are? You get a sense of your place in this environment, like your work, your family, any skills or traits that are positive that you could use in your current life. What is your purpose in this lifetime? Notice any people in your environment. Look into their eyes and see if you recognize anyone from your present lifetime. Go to the next important event in this lifetime. What is emerging? emerging for you. What decisions are you making? Notice how this event can help with your current lifetime. Let's move forward to the, your death in this lifetime. Know that your soul is a spiritual being having a human experience, flowing in and out of different life forms throughout eternity. Death is nothing to fear. It is simply a gateway between lives and the interlife between lives. Your higher eternal self will guide you through this experience as always. How did you die in this lifetime? What were your feelings about this process? If you need to take a minute to do some healing to this lifetime, take a nice energy ball and scan your body for any residue that you need to get rid of now.
It's magnetic. It will collect all the residue from that lifetime and hurl it into space when you are done. And keep those gifts that you can use in this lifetime. Now float above this experience and see yourself in the interlife, the safe healing space we retreat to between our lifetimes. What is it like for you? Do you recognize anyone there that is helping you? The interlife can be a place to heal and review your life. This is a special place to heal from life's traumas and review what we've learned and understand how karma worked in this lifetime and even make new agreements for this lifetime. What lessons have you learned from this lifetime you experienced? What lessons may be carried over to your current lifetime? What gifts from that lifetime can you bring to your current life that will help you? If the person you were from the other life could talk to you now, what would they have to say? How can you bring more healing into this lifetime? Are there any other words of guidance you are sensing? Take a minute to send any additional healing to that past lifetime that may resonate with your current life. It is now time to return to full awareness in your outer environment, the here and now. Know that what is held within is always there. You will remember everything that has occurred on this journey and more and more information will come to you as you process the events. Begin by thanking your higher self, the living bridge between you and the divine for this guidance and protection. Know that this sense of helping being is always there when you need it. It is the divine and eternal part of you. Also, thank the part of yourself for their presence on this journey. Honor and remember them as a part of your learning. Thank anyone else who helped you along the way. Now you find yourself back in the Hall of Mirrors. You may retreat from this place back down the path you enjoyed earlier, leading back to the outer world. You may want to look back over your shoulder and see this sacred place shimmering. 
it is always there. And you may come back at any time. The discovery of yourself is an endless adventure. As I count back from 10 to 1, you will feel more and more in your body and more aware of your physical world. 10. Feeling relaxed and peaceful. 9. Sensation and feeling returning to the physical body. 8. Feeling stronger and healthier and in a higher vibration. 7. Returning to normal and balanced conditions. 6. You can begin to stretch your muscles, move your hands. Five, feeling a sense of well being and contentment. Four, you are feeling more alert. Three, movement is easier. Two, feeling mentally re alert and refreshed. One, opening your eyes and feeling well rested. A good way of grounding right now is to get some water. Sometimes I go into hypnosis with you all. I have to keep drinking the water and maybe get a snack after this before you all head to bed. I know Eva was in Sweden. She probably fell asleep, I think. I don't know. <laughs> so there's more to come. I would suggest journaling about your experience. Even if you had a hard time visualizing, if you saw colors or numbers or anything, a lot of symbols, Everything is important and there's a meaning to everything. So I would write it down and more and more will come to you in the next few days, weeks, months. You may get some information in your dreams and you may have little mini visions about it. And I'd love to hear from you. So if you want to discuss more privately what you experience, I love this work and I'd be happy to discuss it with you. So here is my contact information before we do questions. There's my email, phone number, my website. And I know John shared the eggercasey.org slash events. And there's plenty of great upcoming events like Heal Thyself next month, life coaching, um, which is where I got interested in the, in the hypnosis. Um, and then I'm doing a regression hypnosis training, February 25th through March 1st. And it's going to be great. You're going to get your certificate in this so you can do this work. And if you don't want to do this work, it's just a deeper dive into yourself and your, your self, you know, inner spiritual being. You'll learn a lot about yourself if you take this class. And there's an in-person one, December 2nd through December 6th. And there is my book, Angel Eyes. It's in our bookstore or sold on Amazon. And you, there's a link in, to it in my on my website. Releasing Fear and Following Your Soul Path. It's a little bit about my experiences of awakening spiritually and going, you know, learning hypnosis along the way and what a difference it made in my life. So I'm glad to share that with you today. Are there any questions? That was that was fantastic, Karen. That was that was great. Thank you so much. Oh, Robert has a question. Robert. Hi. Um, thank you for the information, Karen. It's been good. Um, 
one question came up with me as you were walking us through the imagery part. I've actually done that exercise in different ways uh, a few times. Mm -hmm. um, I have one question about the past life regression part of it. In our current lives, why is it challenging for us to just know what it is that we need to do rather than having to bump into walls to figure it out? <laughs> that is a great question. I think I think that, and other people may have a discussion about it, I think we learn what we need to know, and I think it's timing. I don't think we're supposed to know everything all at once or we mm -hmm. probably go crazy but I think it gives us little pieces so that we can handle it. Does anyone else have a comment on that? You know, I, I would, sorry, I would say that also whatever you're attracted to in this life is probably something that you did in the past life. So if you are a painter in this life, you probably painted in the past life as well. Definitely. Thank you. Anyone else want to share what they experienced or have a question about the experience? The uh, guides be um, your dear departed. <laughs> um, uh, and if so, uh, is, is that frequent? Uh, uh, or does that, is there, I guess there's no rules, <laughs> but I don't know. There got to be rules. <laughs> Did you, so you had some you had a uh, someone that was departed with you on your journey? I this was actually a question uh, based on a, another family member. I have an autistic brother who uh, I believe is getting some help from our our late father. Oh, nice. Yeah, I do believe that some of our departed loved ones are our guides. I know that a lot of times when I go into hypnosis. I definitely feel my mom there. I know she wants to talk to me. A lot of them want to talk to you. We just sometimes don't listen and they're there helping us and guiding us. I did a regression for someone that when I first started out that she didn't really believe in any of this, but she did. I know, but I can help. I can still help people because she wanted so badly to talk to her father that had just passed. And she was able to experience a her childhood house and her dad came in and she was talking to her dad and she cried a little bit, let go of some of that emotion. And she felt a lot better afterward. So it even it even works for people that don't believe in the past lives, but do believe in heaven that their their family members come visit. If the appearance of the guide could change each time. Uh, in could the oh, guide sure. I'm sure that different guides come and go from what I've experienced with my own hypnosis and others have described to me a lot of my clients definitely at different stages in your life based on what your needs are at different parts of your life definitely any other questions Actually, Karen, I have a, a question. Because okay. um, as you were uh, guide, leading us into the, the meditation, um, I had this thought that you do this every day, like or several times a day. And do you say the same thing every day? Like I, in, in my brain, I'm, I'm thinking, I don't know if I could do that. Or, or no, <laughs> uh -huh. I have uh, for a group, I have about, I don't know, five different scripts that I can use based on what I'm going to talk about. Okay. And then based on whatever the client needs, I change it up a little bit, you know, and personalize it. Yeah. Like I would ask them, like I told you guys, I would ask them what their spiritual beliefs are. And I'd wrap that into there. I asked, I would ask them what their vacation spot is and, you know, so they, so they can describe that you know, to me, because they would be talking back to me. That's what makes this work so exciting. Um, a group regression, you guys have to kind of internalize it a little bit. But if I were with a, a client, they would tell me all about it. They all have stories and they're so interesting. It's amazing. And I just get into the story. I'm just like on the edge of my seat going, okay, and tell me more. <laughs> you know, it's just like a story and it's, it's fun. 
Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes much more sense. And I'm, yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking if I'm saying the same thing over and over every day or, or whatever, then I, right. yeah, that would be a bit much. But yeah, you're right. You would get very involved with each individual. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Robert, do you have another question? Yeah, um, just something that spurred when I was listening. If someone is having difficulty becoming sensitive enough to envision uh, or getting vision or, or taking suggestion under hypnosis, is it advisable to assist themselves by pre-sleep suggestion in their own mind? Oh, yeah. I mean, you can you can listen to recordings. The more you practice, the better you're going to do. I think I was telling someone before we got on here today that Brian Weiss says it takes eight to 10 times to successfully, you know, get to a place where you want to be and be able to envision it. Not everybody can, some people can do it right away, but mm -hmm. that's not everybody. I, for one, had a hard time meditating when I first started until I had someone actually teach me how to do it properly. And it took a long time, you know, to get to a place where I could, you know, get into that, get into that stage where I could really envision things so it, it just takes a lot of practice yeah so when you're lying down in your bed and you say it to yourself in your own head or say it out loud that would assist your subconscious to slowly come through in pieces toward that aspect of your life if you're working on it correct yeah and i i recommend i read this book and it was a it was it was samantha faye's book when she's been a speaker here at the ARE. she also says to write down a question that you have and put it under your pillow in a couple of weeks, you're going to get that answer. You might dream about it or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's a really good suggestion because a lot of these regressions, they come out in our dreams and in visions and our imagination. And you'll, that's why you'll get more and more. Yeah. But you can talk to yourself. You can do self -hyp hypnosis. There's a lot of different recordings on YouTube and you can, the more you do those, the more you practice that, the, the better you'll, you'll get. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Should I have a question, Karen? Okay, John. And all the regressions that you have done, have you ever encountered anyone that came close to having a gift like Edgar Casey? Um, Okay. The truth, yeah, ah, uh, not not that gifted, but I had someone who went went into hypnosis just like this, and they they gave me a lot of lot of wisdom and information, and I wrote it all down very fast. <laughs> yes, it was even advice for me. Sometimes I get advice. They like tell me, and you are supposed to do this. I'm like, okay, yes, sir. You know, <laughs> so I listen. But yeah, there was one that was really getting some good advice. So some of them out there have really good guides or get information that's past them. It's like the universal consciousness, but not exactly like Edgar Casey would give remedies or something like that. Just advice. It's amazing. I wish we had someone like that. That would be wonderful, right? And then at, on the opposite side of that, what about people that, that don't really believe in it or are a bit skeptical? You've right. For example, one of my friends, she knew she needed to relax because she was real tense. She was a teacher friend of mine and teaching is stressful. She just wanted to relax. I said, well, this will help you. And she also missed her dad. She goes, can I talk to my dad? I'm like, sure, I don't see why not. We set that intention. And she did. She was able to envision him and he talked to her. And then, then later I saw her husband and he comes up to me. He's like, what did you do to my wife? She's the most relaxed she's ever been. And I'm like, well, great. <laughs> you know, she, she just got a lot of answers that she was needing and information and it just puts you in a good place I think mm -hmm. but yeah it, it can it can still be done they just you know they might not go to a past life or they might think they're imagining things but they're still getting 
some healing out of it. And they're still able to get rid of that ego for a little while and just, you know, relax and be stress-free. Yeah, because that's the thing. Life. Yeah, because you said that, you know, they think they're imagining it. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I sometimes struggle with that too, that, oh, I'm putting that image in myself or I'm putting that thought in myself and I've got to release. Yeah, but that. with, yeah that's why we need to act more like kids because, you know, the more we think like that it's just the more that's going to come out you know and we're gonna you know get some of our answers and it's okay so I just keep encouraging you know go with it you know what are you sensing feeling you know and just keep encouraging it and being positive with the person so that they can get information mm -hmm. oh that's wonderful like it yeah I I think you're you're really gifted in that too. Oh, thank you. People. It's a good gift. You. Sure. Bill, do you have a question? Hi, Karen. Yes. I'm I'm wondering uh whether you've had any experience with uh, kind of rebirthing to to guide someone um through their birth experience where there might have been trauma. And if you have, how did that go? <laughs> um you know, I've read a lot about it because I wanted to be prepared in case that ever happened. I had one person that would, all they saw was darkness. And I assumed that that's kind of where they were and they needed to release some of that emotion because they were more, they didn't see a lot. They just saw the darkness and, but they could feel. And they go, I think, I think I'm feeling someone else's feelings. And then I knew I was like, oh, light bulb on. They're feeling what their mother was feeling. You know what I mean? But they got a different perspective of, well, she had a hard pregnancy. You know, she was getting a divorce and she wanted me, but it was going to be hard. So then they just got a different perspective and they were able to come out of it and, you know, have a more healthy relationship with their mother. So, but that was the only experience, but I knew I had to read about it a lot before I actually did. Do you do group? The is it better with a group? And also, do you have a preferred limit to the number of sessions when you want to quote treat a particular case? You know, you tell them this many, and if it's not, you know, uh, this many, and try it, and then 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 take what you've learned and you know go forward with it. You know, how would that? that how does that? That's a great question. You know, I I like to say I'm a one stop shop. You know, they get what they want, but they, but if they come to me, like I said earlier. I mean, I've had some that come in with really bad anxiety, you know, and, you know, I used to have anxiety so I can, you know, commiserate with that. I understand it. And so we use like a clinical, we use that script and, you know, then they listen to the recording for 30 days. They come back to me feeling better. And a lot of times they then want to explore their, their, you know, they're getting more spiritually awakened. They're beginning to get rid of that ego and, become more aware and they they want to know about their past lives and and get deeper into it so that's basically when they come back usually yeah that's a good question but yeah some people will just want to get deeper I had some that visited past lives and they're like well I really wanted to go to Egypt can we go to Egypt next time <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like if you set the intention to go to Egypt we'll try to next time <laughs> So and the, other, the other part was, uh, is it better for some people to be in a group, whether online or in person, but a, a group uh, journey, like do they get maybe help from being with others on the journey or do you tend to do one on one things? I do a lot. of. I mean, I do a lot of groups. I just did a webinar the other day and I do groups when I do survey lectures here at the ARE. Um, but it group is just a little bit different because you're not really sharing your experience. You're kind of like, like I said, internalizing it. You'll have to journal about it or discuss it later. But when I'm with the one-on-one, -on -one, they can, you know, tell their story out loud. David, do you have a question? I have an observation if I may share it. Sure. Thank you very much for doing this tonight, by the way. I have, um, been blessed to have had a number of of past life regressions in the manner of what we've done tonight 
Um, a thing that helped me a lot was the issue of imagination. Like, well, it's just my imagination. Is it true? Is it not true? Did I really live here? Did I live there? What came to me and I've been working with for quite a long time is not so much is the detail true or accurate, but is the emotion of what I am feeling and the relief I am feeling, is that true? So I go for emotional truth as opposed to literal historical truth in my experience, because I recognize that I'm a, I'm actually, a, surprisingly, actually, I'm a, quite an imaginative person, and I can imagine a lot of things. And, and like in dreams, you can have imagery that may not make a lot of sense, but if you look at the meaning or the subtext of the emotion of it, you will get your truth or your message out of it. So I just wanted to share that. That's really awesome. I love that comment. Thank you. But yeah, I mean, I really feel that to be true. And people put too much pressure on themselves. Like, like you said, did I see that? Did I say? And I said, well, you felt it and that was real. And do you feel, I always say, do you feel better? And they're like, oh yes, I feel better. I feel lighter. You you feel lighter. You feel better. You you feel you know because we have too many things going on these days, economically, politically, you know, with the relationships, family, and it's just good to escape for a little bit, you know, and and just get rid of that feeling for a little bit so we can heal. Yep. Yeah, thank you, thank David, for mentioning that because that, yeah, that's exactly what happened uh, with me tonight too. Um, I did, maybe I'll share. Maybe it will inspire others to share too. But um, I did go in with an intention um, for an issue, but um, as we were carrying on, um, the issue of trust came up, and um, and that was huge, um, and and carried on with visions about that. Um, but with that, it, um, it really changed how I was feeling. And also forgiveness came in there too. So uh, that was like a huge release and um, it felt wonderful. Yeah, so thank you for mentioning that emotional, what did you say, emotional truth? Yeah, I wrote that down. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. That is awesome. So how can people so how can people reach out to you if they want to have a like a private session with you, Karen? Um, I can share that part of the screen again. Or, or maybe just put your email in the in the chat. I can do that too. I can do that too. Okay. Yes. I will do that. And and they can have a regression just online, correct? Correct. I you know what? Before the pandemic, I wouldn't have believed in it, but people are more comfortable in their own homes, their their own chair, their own place of rest. And just like we did here, you're still exchanging this energy and you're you're still have a purpose and an intention, and it really, really does work. So I do a lot of Zoom sessions. Great. Okay. And, and, and can you talk a little bit more about the upcoming training and what exactly people will learn? And yes, yeah, so the upcoming training is February 25th through March 1st, and it's online. And it starts on a Sunday and we go from one to four. And then the rest of the day is Monday through Friday, eight, eight to four with the Friday being eight to 11.30. And we'll be doing a lot of, um, there's some lecture involved and some you know, PowerPoints, but a lot of, and there's some demonstrations. And if you're in the class, you get picked to do a demonstration. You know, So you get that one-on-one. -on -one. I do like three different demonstrations. You get one-on-one -on -one and then you get to practice like four times. And that's a lot of practice. So that's my goal is to get everybody confident and learning how to do this so that you can not only help yourself, you can help your friends, your family. And then if you want to put it into practice, you can. 
But if you want to come in person, you can fly down and see me December 2nd through 6th. So that's another opportunity to come to the ARE and get the training there in person. Yep. I got picked to do, I don't know if John remembers, I got picked out of 53 people to go up there and do the demonstration. <laughs> Not as a therapist, but as the client. So I got to be hypnotized in front of 53 people. It was really, really eye-opening. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Now, so I, I've i done regressions where I've, where I've helped people overcome phobias. And mm -hmm. then you were, mentioning, you were mentioning one that you helped overcome someone overcome their, their water phobia or fear of drowning. Do, do you have any other more examples of that? Let's see. Um, I'm trying to think the fears and the phobias, what's coming to mind. Mainly it's um, fear of relationships <laughs> uh, or not getting them or not getting to their partner, finding their soulmate. Um, a lot of fears of being, so they have a fear of being alone, right? So a lot of times they'll go in and they'll experience a lifetime where they were alone, but they learn from that. They, you reframe it and they understand, well, what was going on there? It's happening again. I didn't learn. So what am I learning now? And then they learn it a little bit more quickly. And then they, they find whoever is spo they're supposed to find after they learn their lessons. Yeah. What kind of phobias have you worked with or fears? I had someone who had a fear of heights and regressed her back to a life where she actually fell off a mountain. And oh, wow. yeah, and, and, and it's so gratifying because a couple of weeks later she she checks at me and said, you know, John, I'm on the I'm on the fourth floor of a building and I'm not <laughs> scared. <laughs> that was so gratifying. Isn't yeah, that fun? That was, yeah, that's gratifying. Now and you help people with addictions too, right? Yes, I do help. I've helped a lot of people quit smoking and lose weight. I even listen to my own recordings. You know how you get off track and you eat too many sweets or carbs? The first thing I do is listen to the recording. And then amazingly enough, I go pick out some broccoli at the store. It works. <laughs> David? Yes. Um... I'm familiar with the work of with Dolores Cannon, and I actually had one of those sessions with uh, one of her pupils. Um, so my question for you is, um, as you are doing your regression work, are you encountering the kinds of unusual stories such as Dolores Cannon had uncovered? And consequently, are you recording or in some way chronicling these things that maybe we can get a book from you about some of these more mystical experiences that these people are having in a common, in a common scenario. Well, I only had, um, I haven't had like all the alien type things that Dolores had. Um, I've had people floating in outer space, but it was kind of like the in-between life where they were, you know, getting answers and things and, you know, going to come back. But I am working on a book project right now. Um, I'm doing regressions with a lot of our staff members and people that come to the ARE. And I wanted to find out, you know, with the commonality, like John said, a lot of people have been from ARE, they've had shared an Egyptian life. I wanted to find out a commonality with that. And also to see if a lot of their um, sole purposes are similar to a group purpose, you know, to help the functionality of our place here, you know, so that we can, you know, make this place better and make it grow. So I'm trying to find out, you know, different things that are commonalities there. That's great. Um, Dolores Cannon did uh, something along that line with the Essenes, a couple of books mm -hmm. with Jesus and the Essenes. So, yeah, I would applaud your efforts there. And I, for one, would be very interested in seeing the kind of discoveries that you make. And it would be really wonderful. I, I think that is great that you're doing it. I'm glad to hear that. And I encourage that. 
And I'm also trying to add a historical component to it. So I'm doing it somewhere different on campus, you hmm. know? Yeah. And try to get people to learn about the different places. There's a lot of history that, you know, with our library, you know, um, even the, you know, the old hospital building has several places in it. You know, we can, I can talk about the labyrinth and the meditation garden, even out in the ocean. Someone wants to do one out on the beach. And I said, sure. <laughs> so it'll be fun. We can talk about the, the gold in the sand and our sand packs that are so healing. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments or sharing for Karen? Yes, Teresa. Um, first of all, thank you, Karen. That was absolutely amazing. Um, I, I got a lot out of that. I have a, a couple of comments and then one question. So uh, the first comment is about uh, the phobias uh, that you were talking about and John was talking about. Um, the very first regression I ever experienced um, was dealing with a, a phobia uh, as well. And immediately afterwards, when I saw where that phobia originated from that other lifetime, when I came out of the regression, that fear was completely gone, just because uh, I identified it and knew that it wasn't something that was happening now, it was something that happened before. And it was as simple as that, <laughs> like just knowing where it had come from. Now, it wasn't a huge, huge phobia. Um, I don't know if it had been something really traumatic, but but it did immediately go once I knew where it came from. Um, the second thing I wanted to say was today when I was doing the regression, um, I'm so grateful to you because it really helped me. There was, uh, it was, uh, I did experience another lifetime and uh, with, a, with a person that I know I've had another lifetime with, and I knew about the other one, but this one really gave another layer to it, a little bit more meaning and understanding for me. So I take a great deal away from tonight. Thank you for that. And my question is, um, I do a lot of work with shamanic journeying. And I was wondering if you were familiar with that, because there are a lot of things that are very similar with past life regressions and shamanic journeying, just going into the other spiritual realms and meeting guides and, and departed ones and so on. Like, would you, if you know about shamanic journeying, would you agree it's, it's often there's some similarities there oh, definitely you know they're just a different kind of script and where they take you and different imagery and suggestions i think they're all really good to access and learn about spiritually mm -hmm. definitely thank you mm -hmm. thank you for your comment Anyone else wants to share? I think everyone is kind of zoned out from the regression. <laughs> They're going to get some good sleep tonight. <laughs> David. David. Sorry about that. Got me talking, so now I don't want to stop, I guess. Uh, I just wanted to share with uh, everyone that if you haven't done this process, it's worth exploring. Um, very briefly, when my wife was about, but became pregnant with my son in 1986, I totally freaked out because I was afraid I was going to be like my father and be abusive. And that's when I went into this um, uh, uh, an extended series of regression therapies and it made an entire, it, I basically stopped the generational abuse using, because of this process. Um, I also, when I was in elementary or in junior high school, I had a writing assignment. I was terrified and totally freaked out over the idea of writing. Um, consequently, I found out through regression therapy, that I had a life uh, where I was burned at the stake for heretical writing. And as um, as I think Teresa, Teresa mentioned, yeah. uh, 
once I found out about it, I was able to let go of that. And so I'm bringing these up and this is all that happened many years ago, of course. And when, the point I want to make is it's worth doing this process, even if you're kind of like, mm, I'm not sure, because at least in my case, and I imagine with a lot of people, it has been a lifelong influence and literally a cross general gener a cross generational healing between me and my son and with me and my father. So I just want to offer that as some encouragement. Thank you. Well, I thank you all tonight. You guys have been a great audience. You have great questions. And, you know, I just send all my love out to Canada and anyone else that was on in Sweden or Al I think I heard one Alabama. Um, just thank you so much. And I hope you come and see me in Virginia Beach sometime. <laughs>